folks and welcome back. In this video we're going to start discussing fuel system components with an emphasis on mechanical fuel pumps. Okay, so mechanical fuel pumps come in a couple of varieties. The traditional low pressure mechanical pump that was typically found with carbureted engines and also with uh, some diesel engines where it was simply used to transfer the fuel from the gas tank up to the high pressure injection pump. Um, and then there are high pressure mechanical fuel pumps that you would see on diesel engines that uh, are necessary to create the high pressure to get the fuel to spray into the cylinder under compression. And also on newer direct injected gasoline engines, we have a similar technology. We have a mechanical high pressure pump. So for today's lesson, we're gonna focus on low pressure mechanical pumps. Low pressure, by low, I'm talking about 4 to 7 PSI, so relatively low pressure. It's more of a transfer pump than anything. It's not trying to create high pressure. A carburetor actually can't run on any higher pressure than that. Uh, it'll unseat the, uh, the float and needle valve inside the float uh, chamber, and it'll overflow the carburetor. And if we're just transferring diesel from the back of a truck up to the high pressure injection pump, that's really all that's necessary, about 4 to 7 PSI. So... Carbureted applications and some diesel transfer applications. So this pump I have here would be bolted to the engine. We're actually going to take a walk outside in a minute and take a look at a couple of these on engines so you can see where they are and kind of what they look like and how they're plumbed. Uh, it would bolt up usually to the timing cover or somewhere towards the front of the engine block and then something in the timing system either an eccentric mounted right on the front of the timing gear, so a, a circle with the hole drilled off center so that it will wobble like an egg as it uh, rotates with the engine, or a dedicated cam lobe right on the camshaft, so a lobe that doesn't operate one of the valves that operates this pump, is going to stroke this pump lever up and down, which is going to move a mechanism inside, so kind of like this. And you can hear it makes kind of a funny sound. The sound you're hearing is air coming out of the fitting when I pump it. And that kind of squeaky sound is the check valve that's inside there, or one of the check valves. Okay, so inside the housing, where it's crimped together, is a rubber diaphragm. Underneath the diaphragm is a chamber. In that chamber is a couple of check valves. So one of them is going to be an inlet coming from the fuel tank. And there's going to be a little check valve that can open up into that chamber but cannot allow fuel to go backwards. On the other side, the outlet of the pump, there's going to be another check valve in there that can open up to let fuel come out but not back. So basically we're forcing the fuel to only flow in one direction. This diaphragm is going to be moved up and down by the motion of that pump lever. So that lever kind of reaches into the engine, passes through the pump, there's a pivot point. Up here there's a rod and there's a spring. So this is going to pull a rod through a spring That rod is going to be attached to the middle of the diaphragm. There's going to be another spring inside there that pushes downwards on the diaphragm. That's the spring that I have to overcome when I'm pushing on this. It's got quite a bit of tension. The spring up above has a different function. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So inside the engine, a cam lobe or an eccentric is going to operate this lever. We have our pump lever right here. Inside the housing, there's a diaphragm and a couple of springs. Down in the fittings, as we mentioned, we have a couple of check valves. So 
basically every time this cam spins around, when it pushes the pump lever down, the pump lever will lift up on that rod through the spring, which will pull the diaphragm upwards. When the diaphragm pulls up, it's going to create a suction in this chamber because the volume is increasing. It's going to draw in a specified volume of fuel into the chamber. As the cam continues to rotate and the lever moves back down, the diaphragm will be returned by the spring. That's going to compress the fuel in this chamber and force it out through the outlet check valve and up to your uh, diesel injection pump or to your carburetor. And this is going to be able to develop about 4 to 7 PSI. Which is why it's known as a low pressure fuel pump or low pressure fuel system. Under certain operating conditions, the engine might be running at a high enough RPM that the number of strokes per minute is trying to force more fuel than the fuel system can take in. So if the engine is not requiring as much fuel as the pump is trying to deliver, pressure is going to build up in this chamber. When it does so, it pushes up on the diaphragm, and basically this spring is no longer able to transfer the motion to that diaphragm anymore, so the diaphragm will basically stop pumping. At, at higher RPMs, this thing can stop pumping temporarily until the fuel system has actually used all the fuel it's trying to deliver. So in that way, it's kind of self-regulating. So this pump regulates its own pressure based on the tension of the spring inside. So we have a return spring, then we have a pressure regulating spring in there. So kind of a simple design. Uh, the older models had two, in, uh, two fittings, an inlet and an outlet. This one has three fittings because this was from a later model vehicle and it uses a return line. So one of these is a line that goes back to the tank so that it's constantly circulating fuel and we'll get into the, uh, the functions of that at another time. For now, I'm going to try to hit the pause on this and take a walk outside and show you some components. Okay, so we're outside looking in the trunk of my 67 Ford Fairlane. The reason I picked this is one, it's here, two, it's carbureted, and three, if we lift up this trunk mat, Voila, there's the fuel tank. So the fuel tank basically is the floor of the trunk in some of these old cars. We see the filler neck right here, that's the filler tube. And this right here is a vent. If we follow this pipe up, it'll make you dizzy. It goes over here, goes to some rubber line, and right there. And the light it goes down through the trunk floor and it's just ventilated. So this car is so old that it was allowed to uh, just vent its gas tank to the atmosphere which contributed to hydrocarbon pollution so we don't do that anymore. Um, we're all so used to uh, fuel fillers in the side of the car. Some of you may have never even seen this. It's my license plate bracket. That's where the fuel cap is. So some of these old cars that's the that's where they used to hide the fuel filler. It's uh, Real convenient when you have a sore back, you have to bend way over to fuel the car up and, uh, you know, if you ever had to put gas in it with a funnel, that's kind of a trick. So I actually keep this little L-shaped tube in the trunk for using a funnel if necessary. Okay, so notice I said this line is a vent. You can't see the outlet of this fuel tank because it's actually underneath the car, and I'm not going to crawl under the car, but I will show you the piece that it comes out of. That's known as a sending unit. Okay, so that sending unit is underneath the car. That houses the, um, the fuel level sensor for the gauge. And uh, also has the fitting for the fuel to come out. So if we come up front, we see where the fuel line ends up. So this right down here is the fuel line. It runs underneath the vehicle, comes up through the inner fender well. Goes from metal to rubber. I'm going to grab my little flashlight here. goes from metal to rubber. Down underneath my power steering pump, which is kind of making it hard to see. There's a little metal can right here. I'm tapping with my flashlight. That's the fuel filter. And then, just like we saw inside, with the light shining on it, there's the fuel pump. So right, right here, here's my fuel pump. Coming out of the fuel pump is another metal line that you can see over here. And it runs upwards, up above the intake manifold, to a rubber hose. I'll reach up here and unscrew the wing nut. We can lift the air filter off. 
Here's the carburetor. So we got a rubber hose. Basically, anywhere there's going to be motion, so typically around the engine and sometimes under the car, you're going to go from a rubber, a uh, steel line to a rubber hose. This car has an additional fuel filter right here. It's got a little filter that screws right into the float bowl of the carburetor. So the fuel is stored in this bowl. This is a four barrel carburetor. There's two barrels here that the car runs off of under normal driving conditions. And then when uh, you put your foot in it and engine load demands it, the second two barrels kick in. So the second secondary side of this carburetor gets its fuel from the primary side through a metal line that reaches around the back and feeds the rear fuel bowl right here. So it's got two float bowls right there, full of fuel. And in another video, I'll explain to you how carburetors operate. Um, not that you're gonna find any new cars using them, but uh, if you're learning about automotive, you should understand what a carburetor is and how it works. So that's our simple returnless mechanical fuel system for a carbureted engine. Basically, whatever the, the pump can pump up to the carburetor, uh, it either goes into the carburetor or the pump stops pumping when we uh, overcome the pressure relief spring there. So now we're going to take a look over here. We're kind of fortunate. The bed is off my truck right now. So you can actually see the gas tanks, or in this case the diesel tanks. So here's my rear fuel tank. This truck's got dual tanks. Bed's just about ready to go back on. So this filler neck here will be bolted into the bed. You can see it goes from metal down to rubber. So fuel goes in here. Up at the top of the tank is a vent fitting. If this is, if you follow this along, this was clipped to the frame until I did some painting. Uh, it's just an open system because diesel doesn't really make a whole lot of uh, evaporative emissions. This piece right here is known as the fuel sending unit. You notice that there's two lines here. One is a feed and one is a return. So fuel comes out of one of them and comes back the other. And then there's some wires coming out of here. On a more modern vehicle, the fuel pump would be electric and it would be in the tank. And that's what a couple of these wires would be for. But on this, because it's kind of an old school diesel, uh, the wires are just for the sending unit for uh, the gauge. So that's just for my gas gauge. So the tubes run along the frame. We come up here. We see my front tank. Now my front tank is disconnected at the moment. You can see the filler neck just kind of sitting here. You can see the vent tube. And you can see where the sending unit belongs it is a piece of an antifreeze bottle. I'm just blocking off the hole right now. My front sending unit uh, rusted out, and it took me a while to find a replacement. Um, when it first, first went, nobody was actually making this sending unit. You couldn't buy it. Ford had discontinued it, and the aftermarket didn't make it. And uh, now somebody uh, remanufactures it, so I, I have, or reproduces it, rather. So I have a new one just waiting to go in. So you can't see it from here, but there's a valve assembly down on the frame that's electrically operated and allows me to choose between the front tank and the rear tank. And I'm very much looking forward to getting the front tank hooked back up because the front tank is like 20 something gallons and the rear tank is only 16. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to having my front tank back. If we go around over here, we'll look up under the hood. Actually, before we get under there, we'll look down here might be tricky to see because I left my flashlight over on the other car. I think you can just kind of make it out. The mechanical fuel pump down there, kind of round. You can see the fuel line coming up. So the pump is down there. That's the mechanical fuel pump that draws the fuel from the tank. It comes up this line, up here, and into this fuel filter assembly. So. On a diesel engine, you're more likely to find a large fuel filter, and it's usually up under the hood. So it almost looks like an oil filter. It's sort of a, a canister-style filter. The, uh, the bottom is a big nut that threads off after you've taken the filter off. There is a uh, water sensor in the bottom here to, uh, to let you know if there's any water in the fuel, and that turns a warning light on on the dashboard. There's also, again, hoping we can see it. brass drain knob. I can open that drain and let out any water that's in there. At the top, we have another metal line leaving it. If we follow that metal line along, it runs down here. 
and into the back of this injection pump. So this pump is my high pressure mechanical pump. So this, this pump is bolted to the back of the timing cover right here. There's a gear that's driven off the camshaft that runs this pump. And then if you look, you see four metal lines going out to the left side of the engine, four metal lines going out to the right side of the engine. Those are the high pressure injection lines that bring the fuel to the injectors themselves. So we have a low pressure pump down on the side of the engine just to get the fuel up to the filter. Then from the filter over to the high pressure pump and those, uh, those metal injection lines are carrying the high pressure right to the injectors. The rubber line you see here is a return line, as is this over here. So this line returns excess fuel from the left side of the engine on the injectors, and this one returns any leftover fuel from the right side back to the fuel filter. And what those lines are good for in a diesel is purging any air bubbles that get into the system. It keeps uh, air out of the injectors. And uh, you might recognize this as a, a tire schrader valve. This little port here, I take the cap off. You see it's got a little schrader valve in there. That can also be used to help purge air from this system. So diesel engines, unlike a gas engine, are not very forgiving when you get air in the fuel system. They don't like to be run out of fuel. All right, folks. Well... That about concludes our uh, low pressure fuel pump video. So now that you've seen a couple where they live on the engine and uh, kind of understand what their purposes are, that about sums that up. So in our next video, I'll talk a little bit about uh, electric fuel pumps and high pressure fuel systems. We'll talk more about return style systems and return less systems and how they operate. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Until next time, I'll see you.